Today's project, how to install a split rail fence. Let's get into it, shall we? Three things happening at once here, but they're the beginning of a successful project. Step one is I've determined the fence location, which is an inch or two in from the property line. Two, I've set up a string line. Three, I've already called my dig safe number, which is 811. Even if you're certain nothing's back here, and you're not gonna hit any underground utilities, call anyway. If you're a homeowner, it's free, and if you're a contractor, you're covered. Third thing that's going on is we start with the corner post, and that I'm gonna excavate right now. Walk and talk on this one, everybody. What you're looking at there is a post 30 inches deep, and it's a corner post, and the reason for the post hole diggers is to keep the post nice and plumb because I had to put it towards the back of the hole. I've got it right on the string line. And the reason that this is a walk and talk and not a point and shoot is because I like to set the corner post in a bag of fast setting concrete that was setting very fast. So before that became ballast for a sailing ship, I had to get it in there, tamp it down, but where we're at right now is I now have to make shorties for that opening and then start to bring my posts this way. That's all coming up next-ish. It's spitting rain here on the split rail fence project and I had, not have, had two holes open with my dirt piles out here. And if you have clay-like soils where you live, like I do, and it's about ready to get wet, my tip to you, stop what you're doing and get those holes filled in because clay plus water equals brick. And not really brick, but it makes the dirt way hard to handle on refill. Get it while it's dry. Woo! couple of things happening here as it relates to post layout. First, distance between posts for the rails that I have looks like it likes to be about 10 6. So I put a little marker here at 10 foot 6, pull this tape back, and because I want these to be reasonably straight, I just take the level, dangle it, get myself close to plumb and on the line, that appears to be, and then I mark the string side of the level, it's my piece, and that will be the center of my hole, which I'll dig with that in just a sec. Another tip, I'm finding that there's nowhere to put anything that's not in the way of everything else. So what I've decided thus far is that the tape likes to be on a fence post and these things, which I'll need, like to be in the middle of a section. You line them up there, they're in the way when you install that section. But right here seems to be saving steps. I've even got the chainsaw right here. When the hole is wide open, there's nothing to brace the post to to get it plumb. So what I do to help me with that is I get it on the line, I set a rail, and then I use the digging bar to hold me on plumb. That way, there's just enough friction in this area right here to hold everything still, and I can set the remaining rails. Easy-ish peasy, sort of. This hole took forever to dig. So the line can't be in the way when you're digging. Easy fix. Scratch all, angle, out of the way. If you thought there was some way I would get through a whole project without using screws, you haven't known me very long. I use screws whenever I can. In this case, it's the Spax number eight by inch and five eighths washer head, and I'm using it to trap this screening. There's a pool in this fence, so I need to fill in these gaps with screening. And while I could use little horseshoe nails to do this, the last thing I want to do is pound on my fingernails all day and then not be able to get this out. By using screws, if I have a kink or a warp, or if I need to get in here for some reason in the future, I'm good to go. Screw it to it. Wood real fence, baby. There's not much to setting rails on a split rail fence, but into the new post, back to the old post. You don't need me to tell you that because it's inevitable you figure it out. You've never done this before. But as I set these posts and rails, I'll tell you something. Whoever invented a split rail fence, kind of the commodity fence of the fence world, man, they really knew how wood works. Peak side is up. Everything's wedged together. These tapers are really complicated. It's hard to uh, mimic them with a chainsaw when needed. And it all sits nice and tight without any fastener. I'm impressed, Mr. Split Rail Fence Inventor Guy or Girl. 
And because there's only one of me, I like to do as much as I can in the segment so I can move on to the next segment and not have to go all the way back and start something new. So to that end, I just backfill the holes as I go. Also, there's no fence in my way, as you can see, to make backfilling the holes more difficult than it needs to be. My go-to for this is a flat shovel. I don't want to be digging around in all this bark mulch and everything with the round shovel. I'll be here for five years. I'll get... get that shake the enamel off my teeth. So I just scrape it in and I overfill the hole because when it rains, and it will, unless you live in California, then it really might not. Um, groundwater, water forcing its way down will take all the air out of that soil and compact it around the coast. That's what I want. Right now it's full of air, like me, hot air. But once the rain hits it, I gotta have lunch. I'm rambling. One more in the books. Almost for sure you're going to have a short section where you're going to need a modifier rail. The way the angle on a split rail fan works is like this. The miter is taken off the rail when it's positioned as such with the corner up. Now I got this one started already. <laughs> and that should fit right here in my shorty section. Like it's post up two more. <laughs> Got an odd scenario here with this tree. I can only dig about right here. Otherwise, I'll be here for a month trying to get a post over there. So what I've chosen to do instead is set my post out, measure from the back of my pocket here, through the post, and close to the tree. I get myself 113. Then I measure this valley, the end of my tape, to about an inch and a half inside here. That gives me a tiny tree. Then I'm going to go cut a piece with a chainsaw, and we'll see if it fits. Mark this piece up already, and in order to carry the line through such that this sits, peak up, corner up. I have to rip that side off and that side off, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to cut it to length first. There are a few little extras on this project I wanted to share with you. Right here, we've got some items left over for DIY projects and yard maintenance, and we wanted to store them off the ground. So I just took and cut up some extra rail material, made it in one by, and we've got ourselves some fence line storage. Another extra on this project is a privacy screen. We removed the old gate assembly and installed this new double clad in an alternating style to break up the space, keep the pool cordoned off, and hide this puppy. All in one fell swoop. And that is it, people of the Good Ship Split Rail Fence Backyard Landscaping Project. That's all she wrote. I will see you on the next one.